the first indian work in english that is raj mohan's wife and this is going to be the last in our series of indian writings in english isn't that a lovely combination yes it is hello this is heena from team test how are you today we shall discuss about raj mohan's wife which is a novella it was published in the year 1864 during colonial times in a calcutta magazine basically it did not appear in a book form or a novella form together you know it did not come up together during author's life who is the author of raj mohan's wife it is our great bankim chandra chatterjee or chatopadhyay who lived from 1838 to 1894 a very acclaimed indian author famously known as sahitya samrat or the emperor of literature and also the composer of our national song one day mataram now raj mohan's wife is bankim's debut as a writer that is his first work is raj mohan's wife and as i told you it is considered as the first indian novella or the first indian novel also it is said in english easy now The setting of this novella is Radha Ganj, a village in Bengal Presidency during that time, and the narrator is third person omniscient. Why omniscient? He knows everything about the fate of all the characters in this novel. Now, I have taken the important chapters out of the many chapters that we will discuss today. So, the first chapter is called "The Drawers of Water." You know, somebody who draws water. I'll tell you. Let's start. कनक मई और कनक कनक यू कैन कॉल हर कनक और कनक आई कॉल हर कनक सो कनक अ वुमन ऑफ थर्टी वेक्स अप फ्रॉम हर सीएसता सीएसता इज आफ्टरनून नैप गेट्स ड्रेस्ड कोट फ्रॉम द बुक अ डिश ऑफ वॉटर अ टिन फ्रेम्ड लुकिंग ग्लास थ्री इंच वाइड एंड अ कोम अ लिटिल व मिलियन अडोर्न हर फोर हेड So this Kanak, who's thirty years old, wakes up from her bed in the afternoon after the afternoon siesta, and she goes to a hut nearby. Why? Here she meets her friend Matangini. Matangini is eighteen year old and is married to a man named Raj Mohan. So you understood who's the protagonist of this novella, Matangini, because she is Raj Mohan's wife, right? Matangini and Raj Mohan have two sons together from their marriage. Matangini has been described as a charming beautiful girl by Bankim quote her bloom was as full of charm as that of the land lotus half scorched and half radiant under the noonday sun no sculptor had ever created anything nearly as perfect as the form half revealed by the neat sari she wore i have given you these lines from the book because believe me when we are reading these lines we are able to understand the work better right and it's even more fun okay so whatever i have given in italics it is directly taken from the book right now kanak insists matangani to accompany her to the nearby river madhumati for fetching water so there is a river nearby madhumati and kanak tells matangani come let's take our pitchers and let's get water from the river matangani refuses as her husband has forbidden her to leave her hut why has the her husband forbidden do you know this because she is so beautiful and the husband is possessive okay so matangani cannot leave the hut but on continuous requests by kanak she agrees oh god okay chapter 2 the two cousins two cousins ki entry hogi you should know their names they are very important characters at the river these two women that is kanak and matangani are spotted by two male cousins whose names are mathur ghos and madhav ghos okay so their fathers were real brothers so mathur and madhav they are cousins Mathur and Madhav are shocked to see Raj Mohan's wife outside her house as she is never seen in public there's a relationship between Matangani and Madhav please understand Matangani is Madhav's sister in law which means Matangani's sister Hemangini is Madhav's wife understood to matlab Matangani ke Madhav kaun ho gaye ji ja ji aur Madhav Matangani ko kya bolenge sali easy Hemangini who is the sister of matangini is madhav's wife easy let's go to chapter 3 the truants return home truants matlab 
somebody who leaves the house or any place without asking, without taking permission. <laughs> when Matangani enters home, an angry Raj Mohan spills the water from her pitcher, beats her and shouts, have I not forbidden you a thousand times? I will kick you to death. You know, Matangani at this time says that I did it because I'm your wife. And they had a big argument from what I read in the book. It's a very, very short book. So I actually read it full. So ultimately, he says that, you know, I'll kick you to death. Now, chapter four is the history of rise and progress of a Zamidar family. You have to understand a little bit about the background of this novel. Now, uh, see, it is a notorious fact that many eminent Zamidar families in Bengal owe their rise to some ignoble origin. Here, the story of a menial servant named Bangshi Badan, okay, Bangshi Badan goes, who is now dead, long dead, is described. Bangshi Badan rose to wealth by marrying a rich woman. Basically, he worked for a Zamidar, Bangshi Badan worked for a Zamidar, and he married a rich lady. After whose death, Bangshi Badan got all the land and he became a Zamidar, right? Did you understand? So now, who are Mathur and Madhav? They are Bangshi Badan's grandsons. Understood? Bangshi Badan had three sons. And in teen sons, may say, Ek son ka beta hai Mathur, Ek son ka beta hai Madhav. Or jo tisra son tha Bangti, Bangshi Badan ka, he had no children. He was childless. Easy? You understood the family history here? So basically now, Madhav is also a Zamidar. He owns lands. He's a rich man. And Mathur somehow has lost his position. Uh, he's not a very good guy. I'm just telling you right now. We'll come to know more about Mathur later. Let's move ahead. Chapter 6 is Midnight Plotting. Who is plotting at midnight? Let's listen. Midnight Plotting begins with this line, quote, All who have their eyes shut do not sleep. Mat walls, like stone walls, have ears. Now, in tears, because Matangani has been beaten by her husband, she skips dinner, confines herself alone in her chamber. She is brooding over her sufferings while thinking about those happy childhood days she spent with her sister Hemangini. Suddenly, at this time of the night, she hears whispers from her window. Somebody is talking like that. On looking quietly and secretly, what does she find? She finds her husband Raj Mohan plotting with a decoy leader called the Sardar. What is Raj Mohan plotting with the Sardar? The plotting is regarding a robbery at Madhav's house. Madhav? There's, a, there's going to be a robbery at Madhav's house by the Sardar. Why? To steal Ram Gopal's will. Who is Ram Gopal? Bangshi Badan's son. Ram Gopal is the late uncle of Madhav or Bangshi Badan's son who was childless and he left his will to his nephew Madhav. Did you understand? I told you, you know, Bangshi Badan had three sons. Just may say one son was childless. That childless son is Ram Gopal. And Ram Gopal gave his will to his nephew Madhav. In return, he said that just take care of my wife. Okay. Now, despite of the fact that Madhav had helped Raj Mohan secure a job in Radha Ganj, Ram Mohan agrees to help the Sardar in this loot in return for a fair share. Quote, Matangani sank on the floor in astonishment and dismay. When she hears this, that Madhav will be looted, there can be a chance that he can also be killed in this loot. Matangani sanks, you know, sinks on the floor in astonishment and dismay. And this chapter ends. Next chapter, love can conquer fear. How has love come here? Does Matangani love somebody? Not her husband, Raj Mohan? We'll come to know. Quote, Matangani had a brave heart. And for her sister and her husband, she felt she could risk her life. So she goes to Madhav's house very late at night to warn him ahead of the robbery. 1860s, a woman at midnight goes in a whale just to inform somebody that your house will be looted. That was quite a brave take, right? But Matangani did it out of love because love can conquer fear. She loves whom? She loves Madhav. Yes, she loves Madhav. Chapter number eight. Forewarned and forearmed. 
Madhav is startled to listen to Matangani. He quickly alerts the guards who howl at the top of their voices to scare the decoits away. Because of this, the robbery is averted, it is prevented. But let me tell you, Matangani does not tell Madhav that her husband Rajmohan is involved in this. No, she only says that few decoits will come to loot, you know, to loot, to take the will that uncle has given you. So kindly beware. She never takes the name of her husband. Okay. After this, the chapter is we meet to part. Matangani is sure that Rajmohan will find out about her treachery. So this is the time she wants to share her feelings that she has dug up in her heart for all these years. Her feelings for Madha, for her Jijaji. In tears for the first and last time, she reveals her feelings to Madha. Quote, Spur me not for this last weakness. This Madha may be our last meeting. It must be so. And too, too deeply have I loved you. Too deeply do I love you still. To part with you forever without a struggle. Madhav cries listening to this, but he does not know what to reply. And Matangani leaves. Next chapter, The Return. When Matangani reaches home, Raj Mohan eyed his wife with a savage glance. He calls her accursed, wretched, and throws her down on the floor to kill her. See, here also there are two meanings. Raj Mohan senses that Matangani had gone to Madhav. Raj Mohan somewhere knows that Matangani loves Madhav. So he has this feeling that my wife went to another man's house at night. Okay. And another definitely, he thought of this that Matangani might have told about the robbery to Madhav. So two things he was thinking about the affair and about the news that Matangani might have given to Madhav. Understood? Now, he calls her accursed, wretched, as I told you, throws her down to the floor to kill her. She is down. Listen to the quote. The doomed girl sunk about lifeless on the floor. The ruthless weapon gleamed high as it was about to descend on the lovely bosom of the trembling victim. Is she killed? Let's listen in this chapter. Chapter number 11, when thieves fall out. Just at this time, when the knife was about to cut the girl, Sardar and his companion Bhikkhu enter Raj Mohan's house through the window. Surprised that he is killing his own wife, they confront him that he has cheated upon them. What does the Sardar think? Of course, how will Madhav come to know about the loot? They thought that Raj Mohan is at fault. Raj Mohan is the hypocrite. But Raj Mohan says that it was not him. He says it was his wife who was the traitor. His wife who was pretending to be asleep when they were plotting the loot. She was not actually asleep and she went and told Madhav everything. After this, the three, who all Bhikkhu, Sardar and Raj Mohan, they plan to kill Matangani, but luckily she escapes. And after this, Raj Mohan swears that he will kill his wife. The next chapter is the protectress. Who is the protectress of Matangani will come to know. Since Matangani would not be safe in Kanak's house, she ran, ran to Kanak's house. Okay, Remember the girl with whom she went to the river to fetch water? But Kanak said that, no baby, you will not be safe with me. So she is taken for hiding at Mathur's house by Suki's mother. A new character is in, introduced here, Suki's mother. Suki might be a person, I don't know, but just take Suki's mother. Okay. So now Suki's mother takes Matangani to Mathur's house. Imagine Madhav's cousin Mathur. A detailed explanation is given in the novella about Mathur's poorly maintained house. Very poor condition. And imagine Mathur has two wives. They're not even taking care of the house. Now Tara, Mathur's elder wife. I will talk about the elder wife and the younger wife. First Tara. Tara, Mathur's elder wife, agrees to shelter Matangani only after consulting with her husband, Mathur. When Mathur returns home, he hears about this tale, what happened, how Madhav's house had to be looted, but it did not with the help of Matangani. Everything he was told and that she has run from her husband who is trying to kill her. Mathur agrees that, okay, I will shelter you despite the insecurity of the younger wife named Champak. So Tara is the older wife and Champak is the younger wife of Mathur. Champak does not like the idea of keeping this beautiful girl in their house. No, no, no. However, the next morning, Raj Mohan arrives at Mathur's house to take Matangani back. He says that he has forgiven her. A weak and scared Matangani is handed over to her husband. 
The next chapter, Consultations and Council. Raj Mohan meets with the Sardar and Bhikkhu in a forest of Radha Ganj. The three discuss of getting rid of Matangani. Raj Mohan comments that although he hates her, but he does not want to kill his wife. The Sardar forces Raj Mohan to leave his family, to abandon his family, and join them in their looting profession. Now, Raj Mohan is definitely scared, hesitant, but he agrees. When he reaches home, Remember, he got his wife. Actually, he told Zuki's mother that you bring, you know, my wife along. But surprisingly, when he enters home, he does not find Matangani there. Matangani has disappeared. Where? The next chapter, what befell our hero? Who is the hero? Madhav. Matangani is missing since three days. Madhav is sitting alone in his room, thinking about his uncle's will, thinking about Matangani. Quote, he thought of the strange and unknown fate of Matangani. He had been informed of her retreat to Mathur Ghose's house, her return thence, and of her sudden disappearance. At this moment, Madhav hears a noise from his garden. He thinks that he's being looted again. So he's alert and he walks in his garden with a sword. But he is attacked and kidnapped by whom? Sardar and Bhikkhu. Next chapter is Captors and Captive. Mother wakes up, you know, he has been kidnapped. Now, after, you know, some time, he's completely unconscious. He wakes up and where does he find himself? In a gloomy and low-roofed low room. Soon afterwards, Sardar and Bhikkhu enter. They say they, they, that they want his uncle, whose uncle, Madhav's uncle, Ram Gopal's will. And if Madhav will not hand over this will, they will kill him. Here, Madhav sees some connections. He come, you know, again and again asks Sardar, who are you working for? Who wants my uncle's will? Who is it who's, you know, the real culprit behind all this looting and everything? Sardar does not tell him. Somehow, Madhav tries to solve this jigsaw puzzle and finally he realizes the real villain of this novella and that villain is Mathur, Madhav's cousin. Mathur and Madhav are cousins, which means this uncle, Ram Gopal, is the uncle of both Madhav and Mathur. Ab Madhav ko Ram Gopal uncle ne will de di, but Mathur wants the will. He is the real villain. The next chapter is Madhav and Tara. Okay, With the help of Tara, you know Tara, Mathur's elder wife, she is, you know, coincidentally, Madhav's, Madhav's childhood friend. She is Madhav's childhood friend. So with the help of Tara, Madhav is able to discover Matangani. Matangani is also captured in a dark go-down room. When she is discovered, she tells about her tale. She says that it was Suki's mother who lured her and trapped her in the room. Can you imagine that chapter of Suki's mother was called the protectress? Was she the protectress or was she the traitor? She's the traitor. Suki's mother is the traitor. She is with Mathur. So Suki's mother lured Matangani and trapped her in this room. Also, Mathur tried to assault Matangani physically. She told this to Tara and Madhav that Mathur tried to rape me, but he could not succeed. So now she's taken to her sister, Hemangini. She meets her sister, she rejoices, and she tells that she does not want to go to Raj Mohan. She wants to go to her father. Okay? Now the last chapter... The last chapter in life's book and in this. The following day, the Irish magistrate arrives at Mathur's house to arrest him. However, Mathur is discovered hanging from the ceiling of a room. Quote, there in the go-down mehel in the very room which had formed the prison of Madhav and so many others of his victims, the master of the house was found dead. He had hanged himself. This is about Mathur. And now we come to the conclusion of the novella. In the end, there's a conclusion. Just like at the start, there's a preface. In the conclusion, the third person, omniscient narrator, you know him. He is speaking all this. I shall tell you. These are lines from the book directly. So what does the narrator say? And now, good reader, I have brought my story to a close. The Sardar successfully escaped. Not so Raj Mohan and Bhikkhu. Matangani could not live under Madhav's roof, and this, of course, they both understand. Her father came and took her home. It is known that she died an early death. 
Tara mourned in solitude the terrible end of her husband and she lived a long life before dying. And as to Madha, Champak and the rest, some are dead and the others will die. Throwing this flood of light on their past and future history, I bid you, good reader, farewell. I also bid you farewell. I bid Indian writing in English farewell for some time. We shall start with American literature very soon. I hope you liked today's novella. It was Raj Mohan's Wife by Bankim Chandra Chattopadhyay. And this is Hina Vadhwani from Test. Take care of yourself. Bye-bye.